Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the state of F Sharp in 2023, and especially what can we learn? How does it fit into the broader ecosystem of different technologies and programming languages available for you to choose from this year? So why are we talking about this? Well, a few weeks ago, uh, Stack Overflow released their uh, annual dev survey, which I think is one of the best looks into kind of the technology landscape of software engineering, um, from programming languages to frameworks and stuff you're, you're gonna use, or real developers are actually using, you know, in their day to day. On the flip side, uh, F Sharp is functional and I've really been enjoying using it the past year and a half, uh, especially, or probably very obvious if you've been kind of following me and then seeing all the different um, videos I've been creating. And this got me wondering like, what can we learn about the state of F Sharp, um, especially in relation to all these other technologies that we have based on the survey, um, which we really only get once a year. And so this is what we're gonna try to answer uh, here in this video. And my high level answer, my high level, high level you know, executive summary is that F Sharp is a recognizable niche language. It's a niche language that most people have heard of with about 1% uh, actual usage from developers. Um, most users who have used it in the past year like it and want to use it the next year at around 57%. Relatively many developers are interested in using it. Um, about 2.4% want to use it in the next year. And F Sharp surprisingly commands one of the highest salaries of any programming language that was in the survey, ranked third among languages. Now in the rest of this video, we're gonna dive into each of these categories to really understand how it fits and stacks up to uh, other options that you might have. So the first category we're gonna look at is popularity, then love and hate. Um, the actual salaries and overall job market of F Sharp. And then finally, I'm gonna leave you off with some takeaways about my views on the future of F Sharp, the language and technology. So first let's start off with popularity. So from a high level, F Sharp is used by about 1% of professional developers, which is 37th in the survey. From taking a look at this, we can see that it's close to other languages like Haskell, Clojure, Lisp, Julia, and Zig, um, and commands about 1.03% uh, of the market. Now to give you some perspective, I just wanted to zoom out on this a little bit. Um, at the top is, you know, JavaScript is 65%. I'm um, F Sharp is way down here, 1.03%. But I still think it's kind of hard to understand like where uh, this language kind of fits in, in the grand scheme of things. And so I came up with this thing that I'm calling um, basically popularity tiers to try and bucket things based on how they're actually used um, in the industry and the landscape. Um, and so the first bucket that we have is T1, which is standard. And this is going to be those languages that are used by 20 plus percent of developers. And this is going to be things like JavaScript, which of course, most front ends run JavaScript of some kind, SQL, uh, you know, most stacks have some sort of relational database there, even if it's not their primary database, maybe it's like an analytics database, Python, which a lot of people use, TypeScript, which is eating JavaScript, and then you got, you know, your Java and C Sharp, which are kind of like the traditional mainstays of um, large Fortune 500 companies. In T2, we have like the common languages, and these are ones that like you won't find in every stack, but like are frequently used in stacks, I suppose, and it's very common that on your team, you'll have several people who have used one of these before in kind of like a corporate environment. And these are things like PHP, which, you know, is like super big a while ago. Um, everyone hated it for a while. Now it's like getting big again. Go, which a lot of people are using as kind of an easier version of Rust, C, C++, but with, you know, similar um, performance attributes, um, or at least a, a decent trade-off. Um, Rust, which is really kind of owning that performance and reliability critical space. And then you got Kotlin, which a lot of people are talking about as like, you know, a better job. Um, from there, we kind of move into like T3, which which is more of like the recognizable side. And so these are things that like probably most developers haven't actually used themselves, but you probably know someone who has used something uh, in this bucket. And probably that person is like, you know, a cult fanatic of this thing. Um, and so here we have Scala, which is um, basically to Java as F sharp is to C sharp. Uh, I got R, which, you know, I guess is used in a lot of data science stuff. I don't think it's actually used in real uh, stacks, but I might be wrong. Um, Elixir, which is like the functional kind of poster child that's like actually a lot of startups are using now, um, kind of out of nowhere. Haskell, which is like whatever and says functional is, but those are like really Puritans. And then, you know, do they actually use it in production? I don't know, probably not. And then Clojure, which I think is actually uh, similar to F Sharp and Scala and kind of like this, this functional land. Um, and so these are all things that like, you know, again, you probably haven't used, but uh, you probably at least know someone who has used it uh, a lot or significantly or really likes it or something like that. And that's kind of where F Sharp comes here. It's, it's recognizable, but it's still niche, uh, not really used in many stacks, but um, you, 
you've probably met someone who, who, who knows it. Now, one thing I do wanna call out um, from this side is if we actually look at this stack on the right, the kind of recognizable niche, you'll notice that a lot of these are functional languages um, and often will run on a, a runtime similar to a, one of these larger languages, but it just hasn't ever gotten like huge traction. So again, Scala, I believe is on the JVM. I believe Clojure is also on the JVM, you know, F-sharps on .NET, like C-sharp. Um, and then Elixir is, is, I guess, the easier version of, of Erlang. These are all functional languages. Um, and so while F-sharp is kind of not used so much compared to, I guess, these mainstream languages, when we look at functional languages, it's kind of right there with, with all the ones that we would maybe compare it to. So that's kind of popularity and, and where F-sharp fits in the grand scheme of things and actual usage. Now I wanted to dive into loved hate. Now, before we do this, I did want to call out that Stack Overflow has moved from um, the loved hated terminology that it's had for years to the admired desired terminology. And I I personally thought this was really confusing. I didn't really know what this meant. Um, and I've seen a lot of people describe this. And then when I actually read, you know, what it is, it was different than what everyone described. So here is my understanding of what it is. And hopefully this is actually right. So admired means that you've used the language and you want to use the language again in the next year. And desired means that you have not used the language, but you want to use the language in the next year. So hopefully that's clear. And I think it'll make this whole uh, next section a lot more simple and easy to follow. Okay, so looking at, you know, admired versus desired, F sharp, 2.4% um, of people desire this, which is about rank 27 um, in the list, and then 57.4% admire it. So again, this means 2.4% of people um, who have not used this thing want to use it. And then 57% of the people who have used the thing want to use it again, essentially. And one thing I want to call out is that while 2.4% is relatively small on this scale, um, it's actually relatively large compared to the amount of people that are actually using F sharp, you know, about 2x. Um, so yeah, not great, but actually relatively pretty good. Okay. Um, but again, from the zoomed in thing, it's kind of hard to understand where F sharp fits in the broader ecosystem. And so I've created another thing, um, which I'm dubbing admiration tiers to kind of bucket this so you can kind of see how things compare to each other. And so, you know, on the left side, we have our tier one, which is really like the loved things. This is like 70% of people that use this, um, want to use it again in the next year. And this is pretty good because it means that, you know, while there are a significant amount of people that don't want to use it, it's actually like most people had a good time. Um, and so those people that didn't like it might just be edge cases. I would say that this is like the five stars on, you know, Google Maps. Like, yeah, there's probably still problems with it, but you know, five stars, that's still pretty good. Um, and so here we have like Rust, Elixir, TypeScript, and Zig. Um, all of these, I think, make sense. I would say Zig is probably a little bit inflated because uh, a very few people have actually used it. And those that have like probably knew what they were getting into and really enjoyed this. So we'll see what like, you know, mainstream people actually believe. T2 is like the light 60% area. So this is like, you know, probably in the four star range uh, on Google Maps. Like, yeah, the restaurant's pretty good, but like some people maybe don't have the best experience. So you kind of know, you're kind of going in knowing that maybe some things might be off. Um, we got closure here, Python, C Sharp, Go, Kotlin. All these make sense. All these have like pretty good reviews. So so I think this makes sense to me. I'm um, in a T3 one. We got okay, 50% plus. And I'd really say that this is about equivalent to a Google Maps like three star. It's like, you know that the food is probably not gonna kill you. Like, you know, they've got good health ratings and stuff, but like, you know that there's like something wrong. You don't know if it's the price. You don't know if it's the taste. You don't know if it's like things are undercooked or certain things are, are wrong with it. That's kind of what we're saying here in, in the T3 OK thing. And so here we've got JavaScript, um, which makes sense. A lot of people touch it, especially people coming from the back end don't love it. The ecosystem's kind of a mess. You've got, you know, Scala, again, probably touched by a lot of people who are just in Java, don't know much about functional programming, probably don't like it. Haskell, which we already talked about, is like Puritan. Um, so yeah, everyone tells you to go learn it, but then nobody actually uses it in production. Um, and then we got F Sharp. So we're kind of here. You know, most people like it, but, you know, significant portion of people don't like it, um, which I think we'll talk to about a little bit in a second. Um, but finally, the T4 one is bad. These are just things that most people just don't like using this. They don't want to use it again. I was surprised to find Ruby on here because I think a lot of people do like it, but but I guess maybe not. Java, I'm not surprised to have on here. I think everyone has like a traumatizing story with Java. Though I've heard it's, you know, gotten a lot better. Same with PHP. Um, I think everyone just thinks of like the PHP from like seven years ago um, and maybe not the new PHP of today. And then of course, COBOL, which is like, hopefully nobody has to use that, but I'm sure there, there are people that, that do. So hopefully that gives like kind of an understanding of where F sharp lands in terms of like people liking this language. Um, and I wanted to just talk a little bit about what I think the biggest headwinds are to F sharps admiration. I want to note that last year, um, we had about 61% people saying that they, they liked it and wanted to 
use it again. And this year we're only about 57%, which, which isn't great. And I think is worse than the language deserves, but I think I understand why it's happening. So my two hypotheses for why this is happening is one that it's hard to get started. And this isn't to say that there aren't tutorials, but the community is just very small for F sharp. And so there are some tutorials on most major things you might want to do, but they just might be old. Um, that doesn't mean they're necessarily out of date. A lot of them still stand uh, because I think F sharp has pretty good ecosystem and, and fundamentals, um, but they're old and that kind of doesn't give like a lot of confidence, I think, to newcomers to trust this thing. Another thing is that um, because the community's smart or sorry, small, I don't think we have the breadth of kind of articles you might see for like Python, like Python every day, hundreds of articles are being released doing all sorts of random things with it. F sharp is not like that. Like we do have a lot of prolific writers that are publishing things on how to do stuff, but it's like might take a while for someone to get around to actually building the thing and then and then publishing it. So just not quite the breadth of, of topics you might have. So that's the first part that is like kind of hard to get started. I can totally understand that. So a lot of newcomers might come in and, and, and get burned by it. The other side that I think is probably affecting a lot of these functional, I guess, siblings to larger languages like Scala, I would say is probably getting hit by this a lot too, is that most users who don't choose the language themselves are probably forced into it under bad conditions. And so a lot of times what I, we would see is that, you know, there might be one or two developers in a company that really love um, the, these functional languages and they probably more senior, senior staff level, um, they're really good at it. And so they're able to convince everyone to use it. And then maybe they leave um, or maybe they go work on a different project. And now there's these services that are written in this and um, probably decent services, but now someone else has to inherit this code and run it for a long time. Um, but they've never used a functional kind of language. Um, they've never seen this part. They've only seen the other one. So maybe it's Java to Scala, maybe it's C sharp to, to F sharp. Um, and so it's really hard to understand what's going on. Um, it's really hard to get started because, you know, it's hard to get started in F sharp. And so this whole situation is kind of like bad. And I have a feeling this is leading to a lot of people getting burned by F sharp just because of the situation that they're. Those are my hypotheses. Let me know if you have other hypotheses um, below because I'd love to, you know, figure this out and try to come up with better solutions for it. Um, but off the top of my head, some solutions I think for this kind of thing to increase the admiration of the language. Um, one is just really easier onboarding. And I think this comes in a lot of things from different tutorials and just showing people how you built something. Um, all sorts of things like this help people know that the language is used, figure out how they could uh, do something similar and kind of go off on their own and build. And then the other one is just higher adoption, right? Like the whole reason it's hard to find all this information is because our community is so small. And so really you kind of have to go from this vicious cycle of hard to get started, you inherit bad code and then it's hard to learn about it. So vicious to a kind of virtuous cycle of like, we make it way easier to onboard, then the community kind of comes and, and likes it and uses it and then creates their own documentation, uh, which then makes it even easier to onboard kind of stuff like that. Um, so yeah, at the end of the day, I really think it's if we have a larger community and maybe some killer apps and libraries um, for F sharp that this kind of like solves itself. But you know, it's kind of self fulfilling prophecy, like you got to do the thing to do the thing. Um, so so we'll see how that actually works out. Okay, enough of me ranting. Um, now let's get into F sharp salaries, which I think has some interesting data here. Here. Um, this is a short one, but basically F sharp came off as the third highest ranking uh, language in terms of money that you can get paid or average average money being paid to the, the respondent at about $99,000, which is great. Um, I love seeing F sharp on the top of a chart, but I think there's some major caveats that make this data um, probably like not very useful. Um, and I really want to make sure people know this uh, before they, you know, go act on this information. So the big two caveats that I have about this F sharp salary is first that it has really low responses. So if you click into the responses, you'll see that several of the top ones, you know, F sharp, Erlang and Zig have very few responses. And this doesn't mean it's bad per se, but it does mean that it's prone to bias, right? We just have a small population. And so what it's much more likely that that population is going to bias one way or the other, and it's not going to be able to kind of even itself out. And the reason I think this is a big problem is because of the second caveat, which is seniority bias. So if we think about these languages, that, that topped this list. Um, nobody really uses it, right? It's got, these were all very far down and are like, you know, no niche or not even known um, kind of languages, like around the 1% mark. Um, and so when you think about who is using this language, um, it's almost never going to be someone who's new to coding um, because there's just a lot of, a lot more languages that they would have heard of. Like they probably wouldn't have even heard of these languages. And then there's a lot more languages that they would have been, you know, advertised to or found people
people to actually teach them these things. These three languages that, that are top the salary list are not the easiest to get into. Um, a lot of them because they're just new and have a small community. And they're not a language that most people would feel like is something that they would want to build in next. So it's very unlikely that these are new people. And so this is important because the people that it kind of gets rid of a lot of people that are probably earlier in their career and thus are probably getting paid on the lower side of things and really biases you towards these people that have probably been coding for a while and have been looking at a lot of different kinds of languages and experimented with them and thus they're probably biased a little bit higher. And then if you look at these languages in particular, they often have weird quirks to them. And so those people that are really trying these are almost always the ones that go out and try new languages. And they're probably on average going to just be better than those you know developers that don't. Yes, generalization, but in general, they're trying a lot of different languages. They probably know a little bit more about programming, probably a little bit better. And so therefore, these are just going to skew both more senior, but like kind of way more senior um, in terms of probably experience and expertise in these languages. And so I think these are all reasons why the F sharp salary is like totally not true. Um, another thing uh, that I, I want to add in is kind of like just anecdata of me looking at jobs um, in the market. You know, I love F sharp. I'm trying to find jobs in the market. There just really aren't that many F sharp jobs out there, um, or at least F sharp jobs that are like pure F sharp. And so I have to imagine that those that are using F sharp, maybe not actually using F sharp in their job, they just responded that they've used the language. So those are my thoughts on this. Um, you can roast me in the comments or tell me why I'm wrong uh, uh, below. But that's that's why I think these are here and you probably shouldn't um, listen to this, you know, piece of job data. Okay, uh, that's a lot of me ranting. Um, I've almost lost my voice, but I do want to leave you off with my thoughts on the future of F sharp and where do we go from here? So the first thing I want to start off with is that F sharp is a great niche language. Um, it's well liked, 57% of the people that use it like it, which is better than most other languages. And um, there's a lot of people that are interested in this. Um, yes, it's a relatively small amount at 2%, but that's 2x the current usage of it, which I think is a pretty good interest rate for such a a small used language. Now that's what the data says. Um, personally, I am still an F sharp believer. I is still one of my favorite languages. Um, and I really think the reasons are because it really has unrivaled ergonomics, how you type things, how you use things, how it kind of forces you into the pit of success and how easy it is to force yourself into the pit of success. Very little boilerplate. Love it. Great ergonomics. Um, really haven't found uh, any or many languages that, that do it even comparably well. And I love writing it so much as one thing, but if you can't use it for anything, then it's not useful. But I actually think F sharp has got a lot of general purpose applicability. It's almost there that you could use it pretty easily in everything, just piggybacking off .NET. So on the one side, really love actually using it. And then on the other side, it's very powerful. So you could actually, you know, theoretically use it wherever. Now, all that said, I don't think the outlook of F sharp is all positive, though I do think it's positive. Um, it still has some major hurdles that it's going to have to kind of overcome in the next few years to really live up to to what I consider its potential. And I really think the first biggest thing is that it just has a really small community. And when it's a small community, you just don't have as much headcount, as much engineers building things, marketing it by telling everyone what they built or helping others by, you know, asking questions, getting stuck and then getting answers. And then so that when you search for the thing a year later, the answer is already there. Um, all sorts of things come from a small community. And I just think that's the biggest, biggest hurdle. Um, and I think one of the biggest hurdles to uh, actually overcoming that is yes, uh, the document um, but also that we just don't have a killer app. Like F sharp is a language that I think a lot of people are interested in, but they don't have a great reason to go and try it. There's no like Laravel for PHP, which is like their great web framework. We have great web frameworks, but they're not like the great web framework. Um, or Phoenix for Elixir, which is like everyone that uses Elixir goes because they've heard Phoenix is so good. Um, we don't have an app that's like the one thing. And I don't think that's bad, it's general purpose, but I do think it prevents a lot of people from knowing the case when they should try F sharp. And I think the biggest hurdle here is that I don't think F sharp necessarily needs another killer app. I think it has one, but it's just not obvious. And that one that it has is that the language itself really has unrivaled ergonomics, um, but it's hard to get people to see that, right? Like you kind of have to feel how a language feels to write and to type um, and to understand how to read it before you can really understand how nice that is. It's almost like um, a mechanical keyboard. It's like, man, it feels really nice to type this, but when I tell you that you think I'm crazy, until you go get your own mechanical keyboard and you're like, wow, uh, I really like this kind of thing. And so I think that is the killer feature. It's just really hard to share because it's not obvious and you sound crazy talking about it. So that just makes it even harder to market, I suppose, um, which, you know, again, this is the big hurdles that, that need to be overcome. Small community, make the killer app uh, 
more obvious. So that's the end of me ranting uh, about F sharp. Um, if you're interested in F sharp and haven't used it, which is, you know, statistically 99% probability, I suppose, you can get started by checking out this tutorial that I have, which goes through everything about how to build your own web API with F sharp using Giraffe, um, which is one of the leading web frameworks that we have in the language. So check that out, get a feel for what it's like to, to write in F sharp, and I hope you keep building with it in the future. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Go use F sharp, and I will see you in the next one.